Hey everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we're starting a Jetski Makuni carburetor rebuild. The most critical first step is a proper disassembly. I'll show you the exact tools I use that you'll need in the right way to take apart your carburetor without causing any damage. Let's get started. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to do a, uh, a Makuni single carburetor teardown. Uh, I'm just gonna get started um, because pretty much uh, this is pretty straightforward. Um, but this one here was actually on a 650SX Kawasaki key. Um, it is a Makuni kind of a conversion. It used to have a key in, uh, and it actually has a Makuni now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, most of the tools that I prefer to use are right here on the bench. Uh, that's for re rebuilding uh, for the fuel pump. Um, this is for pretty much, you know, checking inside the, um, inside the carburetor. If, if you have a problem where you can't get a screw loose, this is helpful to have uh, pretty much an, um, impact driver um, but these are my favorites right here so these right here are uh, uh, Japanese industrial standard screwdrivers uh, they're made by Vessel uh, pretty much all three of these are my favorites so um, just really heavy duty you know pretty much quality if you actually had to hit hit this one with a hammer it works pretty well for that too and a paint marker to mark your uh, um, your adjustment screws so we're gonna put this back in frame uh, go ahead and get started Sometimes I like to use the, uh, the flathead screwdriver because uh, pretty much uh, it'll, it'll bite sometimes better than a, than a JIS Phillips style. Oops. I'm going to try to keep from getting in the way of the camera here, guys. I'm sorry. So this is the fuel pump, uh, the pulse line for the fuel pump. And uh, I just sometimes I like this because it's, it's a little bit more flat this way um, and hold it just to hold the assembly flatter. Of course, I get, just got fuel all over my hands. <laughs> Hang on a second to wipe that off. Okay. Okay, this one right here does have a bracket on it that's not normally something you see. Uh, this is kind of a conversion bracket to make the cable come in uh, on this side, you know, pretty much uh, because it's in a Kawasaki where it wasn't originally uh, installed. So. Uh, getting all that extra fuel out of there is a good idea. This thing is running on premix, so that's why it's a different color. Um, so this is the, the funky seal that actually goes on there. Um, pretty much just want to lay that with the fuel pump assembly over out of the way. You've got your diaphragm that goes on top of that, on top of the funky seal, uh, and this is the inside. You normally have a uh, a plastic, you know, uh, plastic diaphragm piece, or actually, sorry, a plastic, you know, part for the pulse. Uh, and then you actually have the uh, uh, regular gasket on the other side of that. So that's how it's typically set up. And there's a seal right here. And of course, the uh, check valves and the fuel pump. Okay, so that's part of that. <clears throat> of course, I don't have my needle nose over here. But we're taking the fuel filter out. This a lot of times will have little minor fragments of stuff in it. You always want to get that out of there. Okay, we're going to turn this over. Get all that fuel, extra fuel out of there. Okay, you want to be careful because if there's anything that's sitting on this side that might be bent, uh, if you have to put an impact on it, you want to be, or impact in you know, driver, you want to be careful about that. So just kind of be gentle. You can start from really either side. I like either either side of it. The fuel pump is pretty simple. This side has a few more items in it, obviously the jets and everything, so. Like I said, I sometimes prefer to use a flat blade version because sometimes it actually gives a better, uh, better bite on these uh, dual type screws. They actually have flat blade and uh, Phillips JIS built in. Okay, we're taking off main diaphragm there. That does look like it might be a uh, Makuni style one, original Makuni style. It doesn't look like it technically was leaking, but I'm uh, going to get that out of there. See the color of fuel. Alright, we're going to dump the rest of the fuel out <sighs> again. Let's try to get excess fuel out of there. Okay, and this point right here, this is an important one. So this, uh, these Phillips right here, or JS Phillips right here, all of these in here really need to use a proper screwdriver, uh, which is the JS Phillips style right here. 
Um, if you don't, you run the risk of rounding them out. Uh, this gets a really good bite. This is the needle arm with the needle itself. Take that out. Don't put all this stuff out of the way. You want to catalog it and make sure it's all right when you get ready to put it back together. There's a spring. I'm going to check and make sure that's the right, you know, right style for it. There's a little check valve right here. It has to be replaced. All right. There's a gasket under, under this right here. Keep all that together and these two are made for the jets this big one is made for the big jet this one right here is pretty much the exact size of the small jet so you want to take those out with those particular size screw screwdrivers that one works perfectly for the small jet get the small jet out the big jet like i said this works perfectly for the big jet it's the exact size of the big jet Take the big jet out, flip it over. That's the big jet. Okay, last one in here is, is the needle. Yeah, it just broke free. Okay, good. I almost felt like it was about to strip out. All right, there is a the needle seat right there. So take these two pieces out for that. Put that aside. And like I said, didn't have my needle nose here. Okay, so the smartest way to do this to keep from damaging the needle seat surface is to grab it from the outside, get a nice good shot of it right there. Okay, that's the best way to keep from damaging the area where the needle's going to go in. Okay, that's it. Other than marking your, uh, marking your adjustment screws, your high and low speed screws, and checking uh, how many turns out they are, uh, but the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, obviously writing all this stuff down uh, so you can actually check the internals and make sure everything is correct for the uh, carb. So I'll be back with that in a moment. All right, guys, we're back. Um, so what I wanted to go over uh, this on this part here is uh, the details of the internals of the carburetor. Um, so I've written down uh, the main jet, uh, main jet, pilot jet, needle and seat. Uh, I'm going to write down the low speed screw settings uh, and the high speed screw settings of when it came in. Um, at this point, this ski did run well, but I do want to compare it to what would be, um, you know, factory specs or something that would be close to factory specs just to make sure that it's kind of where it should be. Um, this carburetor was also used on a 650 Yamaha. Um, maybe not with the flame arrestor and, you know, some of the other things on it, but it, it was. Uh, and so I actually pulled the, uh, the pop-off uh, pop pressure specs from that, 25 to 35 PSI, just to get a rough idea because I'm going to verify the, uh, um, the, uh, the pop-off pressure too. So... Um, these are the uh, these are the jets. It was a 125 main jet, 110 uh, pilot jet, uh, 2.3 uh, needle and seat. And so, how you check these? Uh, typically, uh, if you're using this, is what I use. Uh, it actually is a magnifier. It's kind of like for what jewelers use. Um, it just makes it real easy to where when you're looking at it, you get the best view of it. Uh, this does have a light on it too. Um, kind of love this thing. Um, it just gives you the ability to look at stuff. You know. Um, and get the best view of it when it's really tiny like that. So um, on these jets, on the on the big on the big jet, typically the writing is on the top. It would typically have a uh, uh, on this side of it. It actually has like a little square, and then the uh, the reading is on actually this side. Um, and so that's where I pulled that from. One twenty five uh, on the pilot jet or the little jet. It is typically written on this portion of it right here. Not on the top because it's too tiny. It's written on the side of it. There'll be a little square-looking thing with a line through it, uh, and then you're looking for the actual uh, the reading. And that one was a 110 pilot jet. So if you're looking at the uh, the needle and seat, there's nothing on the top side, nothing on the side over here. It's on the very bottom right here. A lot of times you have to clean it because it's what sits against the carburetor, uh, and it's actually right there on this portion. Same thing. It's got like a, a little square box with a line through it. Uh, and then you're looking for the number right after it, and that actually is a 2.3. So um, <clears throat> those are the things you're looking for right there. Um, this is this is mainly just doing a teardown to show you the details. 
uh, but you really should you know write all the stuff down you should compare it to specs uh, you're trying to make sure that whatever's in the carburetor is what it should have in it uh, if it's you know modified to go into a different ski that's that's kind of a different story um, which is kind of what this one is so uh, this this carburetor does run good on this ski so I am going to compare it but I may not change anything even if uh, um, even if it doesn't you know it's not like set up like factory so um, <clears throat> so we're going to go with that I'm going to get the uh, um, the screw settings uh, at this point this is the low speed screw that's normally on the low portion of the carburetor high speed screw is typically on the high portion or the high part so high is up here low is down here okay so I'm going to turn these in I've already got them marked uh, I mark them just just for the hell of it um, just to make sure and I do clean all that off when I go to you know rebuild the carburetor but I'll mark it before just so I can get the best idea as to uh, how many turns in it is. It might just be easier to do it with this one. So what you're going to do is you're going to run, you're going to run this into lightly seated, um, you know, from from the place where you started from. So that is half. Uh, that is another half. That's one full turn. We're going. That's another quarter. One and a quarter. That's a one and a half. This is going man full two turns that's two full turns that's that's really kind of going a little bit too much um, it might actually be higher than it's supposed to be so we're at looks like two and a half that's kind of ridiculous we're going to really hit three that's three turns I wonder why the thing started without having to have any have, have to be choked uh, three and a quarter so we're at three and a quarter, three and a quarter turns out, wow, on the low speed. That is way excessive, but let's see, because like I said, it, it did actually run fine, but it's probably getting more fuel than it needs. So three and a quarter, is there a reading on the low speed? Okay. Might have to start a little bit, uh, a little bit lower on that one. At that point, once you run it down to uh, once, you, once you run it down to stop, you can go ahead and take it out. Because <clears throat> now we have, we got the idea as to where it needs to be. It does have everything on it. it has the uh, has a spring washer and O-ring right there. Always make sure you retrieve the O-ring out of there. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna go with a high-speed one. That one's here, and get a big fat screwdriver on that one. Okay, that's a half, that's a one, that's one and a half, two, two and a half, I would call that two and seven, that's probably like two and seven eighths, that's pretty excessive too. So two and seven eighths, I think somebody just turned those out. <laughs> just to get it to run very likely so we're gonna have to take those in a little bit see if it still starts like it should so like I said at that point then you can take take that out take the screw out and just turn it out with your fingers too but all right like I said same thing just make sure the spring washer and the uh, and the o-ring are on it make sure everything's there Otherwise, you'll know why it's not uh, in the right place. So at this point, you're going to want to clean all this corrosion, all this corrosion off out of these little grooves, out of this. Uh, you want to clean the whole body of the carburetor. Uh, like I said, same thing, grooves here, all of this out, blow all that, blow, blow out the passages with brake clean, clean all this residue off because you want to put a new new gasket here. Um, at this point, you know, this one's got an aftermarket flame rester set up on here. Um, so there's really no, no need to really mess with that. Um, but just trying to clean everything out and obviously clean off the, uh, the, the white marks because there'll be new white marks if I decide to put it back together. Okay, so that's it. Um, this one you don't necessarily need to have to take the, uh, the paddle wheel off or the uh, that wheel off. You don't really have to take this off. You just got to clean everything really well. I mean, you could take that off and put a new gasket under there or seal it better. Um, so that's another thing. But at this point, that's it. That's the teardown. Um, and we're just going to leave it at that, you know, for this for this video. Um, I will do a rebuild video coming up soon. I'm going to probably do a, a, a double uh, a double McCooney carburetor rebuild video, and that's coming up. There's going to be a, um, a couple of 
couple of carbs over here uh, at some point, but I've already done some other stuff on a double carburetor setup. So, Before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to show you guys how clean the carburetor should be and all the parts going back on it before you put it back together. I mainly use a wire brush, screwdriver, and brake clean to get carbs this clean. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please smash the like button to support us and subscribe to my channel to see more cool videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next video.